Once again, Republicans have proven why nobody in the country should be taking them seriously, and more importantly, why they should be sidelined from any and all future negotiations related to the stimulus package. Uh, because they are trying to get Biden to agree to their watered-down version of stimulus relief when they have no leverage. But their pitch to Joe Biden is is laughable what they've come up with. So 10 GOP senators have basically said this to Joe Biden. I'm paraphrasing. Hey, we know that you, uh, you know, you're trying to promote this idea that you want to unify the country. We hear Democrats talking about abolishing the filibuster and passing policies using budget reconciliation. We'll make it easier for you. You don't have to do any of that. We'll give you the 10 votes that you need. No questions asked. All you have to do is basically everything that we want you to do. Take your $1.9 trillion package that you already admit is insufficient and make it completely inadequate to the point where it doesn't do anything. <laughs> that's that's basically the pitch. Like, of course, I'm being less charitable, but you have these 10 so-called moderate senators who actually think they have the leverage to pull this off. Now, I know that Democrats usually get rolled by Republicans in Congress, but this is so laughable, so painfully idiotic that I can't see how anyone goes for it. So they're saying they're going to give Joe Biden the 10 votes that he wants if he agrees to these conditions. This is according to Jeff Stein of the Washington Post. So when it comes to his plan, if he cuts three months of unemployment assurance, knocking it down by $100 a week, uh, cuts $350 billion in aid for states and cities, cuts the monthly child benefit, removes the $15 an hour minimum wage increase, reduces checks from $1,400 to $1,000, cuts parts of school funding, uh, then they'll be more inclined to go along with it. Additionally, uh, they want to further means test the already means tested survival checks. So that way, instead of making the threshold, you know, means tested above $75,000 per year in income, they want a means tested above $40,000. Like, that's that's insane. Also, they want no money to assist renters in need who face eviction if they have lost their jobs. It's almost like they're trolling in a way. Like, this, this is that laughable. How about this? If I'm Joe Biden, if I'm the Democratic Party, I'm telling them, we're just going to go ahead and pass this stimulus package without you. And then you get to explain to your constituents why you denied them relief. Why we voted to give them money but you said, no, I don't want to give my constituents money. You have no leverage here. We don't need you. It'd be nice to have you. But if you don't get on board with this, then fuck off. You're the one who has to explain yourself. We'll do this without you. Now, the question is whether or not Democrats will actually uh, allow this to happen. Joe Biden is uh, holding a meeting with these 10 Senate Republicans, which I think is uh, not even something he should be doing. Uh, it doesn't necessarily seem like he's willing to budge, at least according to his press secretary, because he already knows that the $1.9 trillion proposal isn't enough. So he doesn't necessarily seem to want to like go even smaller when the idea is maybe we should even be going bigger. But the fact that he's meeting with them and even humoring them, I think, is too much. Uh, thankfully, though, the Congressional Democratic Party leadership doesn't seem to even want to waste their time entertaining this stupidity. Pelosi's office actually announced a joint budget resolution that lets them pass the plan using budget reconciliation. And Democratic Party members of Congress in general seem to be just dismissing it outright, according to Jeff Stein of the Washington Post. So, I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. When you get a proposal like this, that is so unreasonable to even entertain it is a joke. I mean, imagine if when the Republican Party was considering their tax cut plan for the rich and Democrats said, listen, the only way we'd go along with this is if you put Medicare for all in your plan. Like that's the level of unreasonableness here. They'd say, well, why do we need to put Medicare for all in this? We don't support Medicare for all and we don't need Democratic Party votes to get this passed. Like it's the same thing. Like they want you to take this bill water it down to the point where it's not even the same bill and make it effectively meaningless. Also, they comply with you? No, it doesn't work like that, okay? If there is no bipartisanship, it's because of you, not because of Democrats. Do you understand? And Democrats, the problem is that 
they need to be disciplined. They're never disciplined in their messaging, and they always allow Republicans to monopolize discourse in this country. They need to actually hold their ground and say, look, we reached out to Republicans. We tried to let them get some input here, but all they wanted to do was further water down, further means test what was already not enough. So we had no choice. We had to go without them. And we gave everyone in this country more economic relief when they, you know, watered it down. I mean, what it seems like they're basically trying to do is force Joe Biden's hand, getting him to prove that he was serious about unity. And if he slaps this down, then I guess he wasn't serious about unity in their eyes. But I mean, OK, if you make it seem like he's going back on that promise to unify the country, you're simultaneously forcing him to go back on other promises like he already promised two thousand dollar checks and it's down to fourteen hundred and you're saying no further water down that promise which was already watered down effectively cut the two thousand check promise in half and you're you're using this to convince him it just it doesn't make sense like trying to make sense of this uh, is unnecessary because it doesn't make sense it's unreasonable. They're clowns, and nobody should be taking them seriously. Uh, if I'm Democrats, I'm sidelining them, and we don't ever meet them halfway because they would never do that. If they want to actually help the American people, we'll welcome them. We'll welcome their input. But they're very deliberately slapping down something that isn't even sufficient when we're in a crisis in America. So we don't get blamed for that. They get blamed for that. And if Democrats somehow end up letting them you know, capture the narrative here, then that's on them. That's their own stupidity. If they get rolled, that's on them because you have all the leverage in the world right now. They should be laughed out of the room. That should be the response. Joe Biden shouldn't even be humoring them with the meeting. I think that's that's stupid, right? But he wants to at least put up this facade that there's going to be unity, but there's no unity because you have a party that's completely captured by extremists. So do what you need to do, pass relief, and then brag about it and claim that you did it without Republicans, that's that's how you own them. Actually, go bigger. Don't go smaller. You already watered it down. You don't need to water it down further to appease these dipshits like Susan Collins.